Mm. There's a transition between the roll, intro roll, and the scene. how to do a transition. How to how to change a transition. And I know I did it because it doesn't do the transition. Um, going to the intro roll. Well, it does that transition. I don't want that transition. I want a different transition. But it may have to wait. Folks is, folks is ready, I assume. I'm ready. Yep.
Hello. Oh, my camera died. <laughs> somewhere in <laughs> that process. Like, oh, no. Just kidding. Yeah, somewhere in the process of getting things ready, my camera died. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, with that fancy new, I love technology. Let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. We'll start with Evelyn while I get this camera working. Evelyn Corbin playing Dr. Dasavi Onayet. Uh, Brian. My name is Brian. I'm playing Captain Jorah Hage. Uh, the only thing I have to plug is my cat. She's great. And I'm done. Yay. Uh, Jack, go ahead. Yes. Hello. Just waiting for my introduction. Yep, Hello, I am Jack. No, you're you're doing your own thing. I get it. This happens all the time on my channel. Speaking of my own channel, you can find me <laughs> over at twitch.tv slash the people's ascension, most usually on Saturdays. Uh, every Saturday at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern time, I run a Dungeons and Dragons uh, campaign series. It's a it's a really fun show. A uh, lot more a lot more drama and intrigue than the usual comedy D and D that we see a lot of. So if if that's more of your thing and you want some some uh some some more fantasy to go along with the sci-fi we have here, come check that out. I also do all kinds of different uh you know just kind of hang out, let's plays. Uh, TTRPG related content throughout the week. Uh, as for right here, I am excited to be playing uh, Commander Arani Ambrose, and most importantly today, Secret Agent Tong. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully that comes out well. Um, oh, it's going to be horrible. It's going to be it's going to be terrible. I'm very excited for it. I'm very excited for my uh, my Medal of Honor slash court martial ceremony. Yes. Um, I still have no camera, and I can't figure out why it's not working. So. Did you try turning it off and turning back on? Uh, I did that earlier, but no, not this most recent attempt. Um, I will keep flummoxing with it. Uh, while both we... in Discord or, or or both both physically and on whatever OBS or whatever you're using. Yeah, I've done it in OBS. I've tried. Uh, Sometimes it just forgets that cameras exist. Yeah, no, I've tried that uh, several times. I've even tried switching it. Like, I can get my other cameras to work. Um, like... Here's my laptop camera, um, which is terrible and gets a bad view. And you know, and here's the OBS camera, which is the camera that you guys see. So it's just my Black Magic camera that doesn't want to do anything because it's Black Magic, and that's how Black Magic do. Um, you must you're not do. Supposed to mess with Black Magic. Yeah, you're, you have to do Black Magic with or the dark Black arts. Magic cameras to work. Precisely. Um, so in the meantime, while we're waiting for me to get this camera working, we can go ahead and start anyways. They don't people they don't need to see me. I'm not important. Um, <laughs> Uh, where did we where did we want to pick up? I should say because we left off with Secret Agent Tong going into the tube, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, going into the tube, erecting a force field outside the door, and then another one at the entrance to the Jeffrey's tube after himself. Right. Um, let's go ahead and pick up with uh, with Tong doing that um hang on i'm plugging the camera back in <laughs> uh that's not gonna work i don't think i gotta plug back in um all right um so tong you have you to to quick do a quick recap of the things that you had done earlier you had discovered that there was uh some possible infiltration in the uh room on deck eight uh, and you had gone to investigate. You had found there was a data chip, a data crystal of some sort, that was there that was distinctly not Federation. Uh, and then you remembered that this room, being an interior room, has a Jeffrey's tube behind it. Decided to seal everything off and climb into the Jeffrey's tube, um, where uh, you then sealed off the door behind you and began walking down uh, the Jeffrey's tube. Does that sum about sum it up? Uh. Yeah, I, I I have my uh, my engineer's kit with a uh, with a little plasma torch out as my only point of defense, and I'm sure I have a tricorder. Right. Um, all right. One more try on this camera, real quick. Huh. I hate I hate this thing. All right. Anyway. So, uh, as you're heading down the Jeffrey's tube, 
uh, you can hear uh, you can hear energy relays below you that are are, are active, um, but you don't hear any footsteps currently. Uh, I assume you want to proceed. Well, you have a choice. You have two choices, really, to just proceed down or up. The energy relays that you're hearing appear to be a sound. The sound appears to be going down or below you. Okay. Uh, do I pick up any any life signs on my tricorder? Uh, yes, in the Jeffrey's tube specifically, uh, since obviously you get lots since mm -hmm. the ship full of people. Um, there is someone moving uh, quickly through the Jeffrey's tubes, heading back towards the uh, the foreground of the, the fore of the ship. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I, I am I am going to I am going to pursue, but if I get to one of those randomly placed convenient terminals that they sporadically place throughout Jeffrey's tubes, I'm gonna see if I can arrest a force field in front of that individual. Okay. Um all right, you're making your way down through the tubes, uh you're moving as quickly as you can. Whoever you're tra chasing is obviously um quite agile as they are also making their way through the tubes quickly. Um, you get to one of those conveniently placed panels and go ahead and uh, uh, give me an engineering and insight roll before you give me anything else. Okay. Uh, engineering insight. I assume I don't have a focus. Uh, I don't I don't have that so. sheet in front of yeah. me, unfortunately. Uh, so. Transporters and replicators and electroplasma power systems. Uh, no. Cool. Uh, difficulty? Difficulty is going to be two. Okay. Uh, no, we'll we'll just we'll just roll straight. I'm not going to generate threat on on this. Oof! Only one. One success. No complications. I didn't change the complication range. I should have done that. Um, you quickly notice the notice that there is um something amiss with the trans with the with the council here, um. It appears to be booby trapped. Oh, you only got one success. I only got one success. You do not notice this booby trap. I do not notice this. Beep 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 beep. Um, it promptly over uh, over because of spark and overheat and, and mm -hmm. uh, shunt uh, electro electricity through itself um, doesn't hurt you, but it uh, the council does shut down, um, and you see the lights in the section that you are on go off. Which point on the bridge, um, there is notification at whoever is sitting at the uh, ops or flight station, depending on what you guys, whoever, whichever one's a PC manned one, um, that there is a power outage in Jeffrey's Tube 8, section, whatever I said last time, which I don't remember right now. Uh, section 4. 8 4. I think uh, Lieutenant Silva makes sense for that. Sure. Sitting at home. Uh, she'll observe that the uh, power has gone out uh, and she'll go, uh, hey, are we doing any maintenance on this this sector? To nobody in particular. Yeah. Um, There's nothing reported, Ensign. One of the duty officers reports. Well. Or lieutenant. Looks, I think Silva's lieutenant, sorry. Go ahead. It looks, it looks like we've got an outage. Uh, I don't know. Let me look. Let me look and find out who the closest technician is, and she'll just uh, she'll speak to the computer, I guess. Uh, computer, what's the closest technician to this node? I assume Tong still has his communicator on. Uh, yes, yes, he does. Yeah. Uh, it appears Ensign Tong is in that corridor. Oh well, he must have done it. Uh, and then she'll click her uh, her com badge. Uh, Tong, did uh, did you burn out something? We're, we're showing uh, we're showing a, a outage here up here on the bridge. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, some, something is something is happening. Um, I am I am in I am in pursuit. Please direct security to when I send a I, whatever Jeffrey's to right. exit is or, over there. 
it's decade section four, but yeah, you, know, you send it to the the appropriate you know yeah. re- receptacle. Uh, d- decade section four. I'm 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 I'm, I'm in pursuit. Only oh, Silva will sit up straight, not expecting that answer. Uh, okay, uh, I guess it's a security alert. Uh, she, she'll uh, computer bring the ship to security alert. Uh, notify a security team. All right. The ship goes to uh, to uh, essentially red alert. Uh, which I imagine piques the interest of a captain and or an Ambrose. Um, security, you're heading down. Uh, Mills, I assume that'll be you. Um, uh, and probably Cobra. Cobra. Sure, maybe we're at ball. It would make sense, but for RP, should we leave Mills out of this one if what I think is happening is happening? Uh, possibly. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think where I want this to go exactly. but Okay. Um, so, all right. Uh, you're heading down. Security is heading down. Oh my goodness, my my screen just messed up on me. All right. Anyway, I just got a grid all on my screen for no reason. Um, I'm just technology is hating me today. You guys are heading. Security is heading down to that section. Tong, you are trying to make your way that way as well. Uh, it's much di- more difficult now with lights off. You get that little hand light out. Mm-hmm. Um, and hold it next to your right next to your eye because that just makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Um. And you're making your way through when, uh, uh, give me a security, um, security and insight roll. And if you fail the roll, you're going to be attacked. Okay. Difficulty, security insight. difficulty is going to be two. Uh, security insight. Yeah. Uh, I have a target of 12 there. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can do anything about that but give you threat. Okay. Uh, normal complication range? Normal complication range. You know what? It's not Ambrose, so it's not going to be as dramatic, but sure, I'll give you a threat to roll an extra dice there. All right, I'll take it. Because this up. is an incredibly stupid situation that Tom is in. <laughs> it deserves some threat. <laughs> I already added it to the nice sheet, so go ahead. Wow. Thanks. I'm not doing it. One success. Uh, so, Tong, um, you're going to find yourself slightly phasered. Okay. Um, and by find yourself, I mean, let me roll damage and see if you if you find yourself or if someone finds you later. Mm-hmm. Light phasering. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage, uh, with, um, 10, 11. So it'd be a total of 11 damage to you. 11 stress to you, sir. Uh, that is my entire stress bar. All right. So, so you will find yourself later waking, waking up somewhere yeah. else. Yep. So Tong goes around the corner and finds himself slightly unconscious. Yeah, I'm, I'm crawling forward on my elbows because Jeffrey's tube. Right. I, got my, I got my little little hand light out, which is really hard to crawl with because why would you design a light that you have to hold like this? Right. <laughs> yeah. yep. uh, I'm just... Uh, halt! Stop! You're under... <laughs> All right. Uh, with that... Um... A few seconds later, the Jeffrey's tubes or the uh, security arrives at the the Jeffrey's tube terminal where they are, uh, where where Tong had directed them, and after a minute or so of waiting, no one appears. Um, uh, Mills, you can go ahead and be there. Um, no. You and Koba uh, are waiting. Koba and Mills. That's not Mills. That's Mars. That's not Mills. Mills. Uh, waiting for Tong to come out of the hole or someone or anyone to come out of the Jeffrey's tube hole and no one does. What are you guys going to do? I will come Ensign Tong. Uh, you get no response. Just look at Koba with a, a, like, a an expression of let's go. Well, not. Can follow. All right. Going in. You head in the Jeffrey's tube. Um, after a few 
uh, after a few hundred feet on your hands and knees with those little stupid flashlights, um, <laughs> uh, you uh, you get past one of the junction points, uh, and there's a, a hand phaser that is lying there, just a little Type One hand phaser. Um, and shortly, short just a short distance from that, maybe not even ten feet, um, there is a uh, a very unconscious uh, Tong. The phaser, when you look at it, is set to um, like the lowest level of stun. Okay. Clearly, clearly, whoever it was was trying not to incinerate the ensign. Right. Um, I'll calm the sick bay. Uh, Mills to medical. We will be incoming with Ensign Tong. He is unconscious. Appears to have taken a phaser blast. Set to stun. Should be fine. Um, but want to get him checked out. Uh, and that's a good place to do the intro roll. Even though I still can't get my camera to work. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we're back. Uh, Captain's log, go ahead. Captain's log, stardate 52882.51. Now, there's an old trill axiom. All troublemakers come from the same spawn pool. I think we're about to find out if that's right. While trying to arrange passage through Romulan space to the lost world of Iconia to put a stop to a group of rogue Klingons, we've uncovered that somebody has been sabotaging Eva's program. I can only hope that my crew can get a handle on our ship so we can uh, get underway. All right. Uh, anybody want to start anywhere? We have uh, a number of scenes that we left off last session. Uh, loose ends, as it were. Well, I think it's safe to say that a security alert would get to the captain. So he is definitely going to return to the ship. Yep. All, right. all the issues we've had. Let's... Uh, uh, I imagine Hage probably have heard by now that, you know, Tong was found in the Jeffrey's tube and whatnot. So let's go ahead and actually start this out with no way for Tong to hide from the captain. Um, <laughs> and the captain is in sickbay with a recovering Tong who is uh, who has been treated by uh, the, the good doctor. Um, he will recover from his wounds fully. He is not injured in any way. And gotten a stern lecture from Mills about calling for backup and not going to tubes alone after saboteurs. We didn't use that one on camera. I was about to see what the captain probably. So, oh. uh, but anyway, captain, you know, essentially that, uh, yeah, there was a security alert and Tong was in the, in the corridor looking for somebody. Instant Tong. Uh, how are you feeling? Hey, um, the, the doctor has seen that I am well, sir. Um, that's good. When I heard that one of my uh, that one of my engineers had been ambushed in a Jeffrey's tube, uh, I I got worried. Do you mind telling me what happened? Uh, of, of of course, sir. Um, I. Uh, no, noticed a, a problem in the nearby uh, Jeffrey's tube, a, a, a number of issues that I was I was going to uh, check out, and uh, I, I traced that to to the Jeffrey's tube, and I was looking into the situation uh, when I uh, noticed some sabotage 
when a panel blew up in my face, uh, sir. And then I uh, proceeded and got shot, sir. So you noticed sabotage in the ship, but you didn't think to call in a security alert? I, I I I did I I did uh, in, inform uh, whoever was on the uh, communicator when that happened, uh, sir. Well, um, we'll ha I'll have to check the communicator logs to see if that's the case. Um, I was told that you were the one contacted when you were found to be in the area. After. A power surge. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, that that was uh, that that was a, a, a sabotage that that I noticed when it exploded, uh, sir. Ensign Tong, Starfleet likes a little bit of recklessness in its officers. It does. Uh, I, old tradition going back uh, hundreds of years. One thing it won't tolerate, though, is lying. Are you telling me the whole truth? Uh, well, uh, tr tr truths can be very long, sir. Uh, I've got time. Right. Uh, well, uh, sir, I, I noticed um, <clears throat> uh, at, at, at some point there was some interesting communications uh, that we couldn't really identify, so I was looking into them and I didn't really think anything much of them at, at the time, uh, and, and then I noticed that they, they led somewhere and that somewhere was, was strange, uh, sir, so I, I looked into that uh because because that that was that was strange uh and and i set something up so that if it happened again i would know and then i could make sure it was actually something uh sir and i was in the process of doing that uh said something uh investigation uh sir and then i got uh shot you went into a potentially dangerous situation alone and for your trouble you managed to get you managed to get knocked out and left into left in a, a corridor uh, yeah uh, yes sir we're going to have another talk about this uh, of course sir right now you concentrate on getting better after that we'll figure out i, I want a full report no no half truths or omissions i want everything what you found uh where you found it we're going to put this in starfleet security hands uh the people who it should have been in the hands of in the first place not starfleet security but the, the security department's hands yes sir of, of course sir i have a report for you right away sir He'll pat his knee. All right, get better. And then he'll, he'll leave. I got my camera working. Hey. Yay. And that was a good scene. I like that scene. Um, anybody else have anything they want to do real quick before we move into something else? I, I definitely want to see the part two to that scene because there there's definitely a part two uh, to that scene. Yeah. All right. Um, So, what's next for you guys? Um, I mean, I, I feel like uh, Jorad would leave a sweep of the ship to Arani. Sure. Since he's head of security. And, you know, as, as I said, security should be in charge of this. Right. So, Ambrose clearly is, I assume Tong is going to actually submit a report. Oh yes, Tong being uh, obedient. Yeah, right, right, right away, really, and and as thorough as as Tong can be. So this is going to be a really long, really repetitive, right. really badly written report. It's going to contain things like what he ate for breakfast and 
what time the replicator like he's gonna reference all the logs and give links like, oh, to yeah. all the logs and oh yeah <laughs> uh, like a like a lot of really well-written technical information and then a lot of just stumbling and cyclical thinking and and right. whatnot when it actually comes to application of of doing things right um so ambrose you uh you get your security teams working on um investigating the ship uh do you have anything you want to do with that or do you want to skip that and, and just say that the ship is being uh that the security breaches are being investigated by 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 uh ship security uh well yeah i mean uh first off no one in or out of the ship ship's on lockdown right uh in inform the, the station of what happened uh file file that sort of report make sure that everybody knows no one in no one out uh that and that includes both the uh the airlocks and of course transporters mm -hmm. um and in fact we'd probably take all but one down right uh and then yeah just send out security teams to to sweep the ship and we did find uh mills did find the hand phaser so i want to get that to the doctor and see if they can get any any prints or dna off of it yeah Koba, koba's got forensics so he could sweep the 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 scene of the attack for any kind of Perfect. DNA traces all right uh and probably probably have somebody work with one of the uh security teams probably the one that koba is on actually uh somebody from engineering uh who is not tong to work with koba on uh checking out the the actual sabotage all right um let's go ahead and have dasavi and koba in uh one of the bio bays doing some forensics um uh, we can start with uh giving me a a roll um let me see my sheets here uh let's get a control or reason and medicine versus or science i'll take science for that one too versus um reason and security with uh, uh not with not versus but um assisted by uh reason and security with the focus in forensics right, so why don't you take the main role on that brian and i'll take the assist well, my you science, want, you want me to roll the, the one to assist right jeff yeah okay okay so the main role is will be coba it'll be reason and security okay Um, wow, I have no help. I'm going to generate a threat. Uh, you should have rolled. Okay, there we go. Oh, yes, you are going to generate a threat. Um, so that's a 24 and a 3, plus you gave me a threat for doing that. That is four successes. Um, four successes for you and one for her, right? Nope. Uh, no, two. No, I'm oh, sorry. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I the rolled over. Yeah. My my target was fifteen. Uh, uh, four four right. total. Four. The ship cannot assist. I'm going to use my complication at the moment um, to do something else. You definitely get DNA off of it. You get two types of DNA off of it. In fact, because of your complication, um, mm. uh, you get Romulan DNA and you get Vulcan DNA. Mm. Um, you have your difficulty would have been two for that, so you have two questions you can ask on that if you want to break that down some more. Since the doctor is working with you, you can get more specific than that if you need to. Uh, you know what? I think I'm just going to generate the momentum. Sure, we need it. All right, so you have Vulcan and Romulan DNA on the on the hand phaser and in the Jeffrey's tube area, as well as Frangi. <laughs> I think we need to account for all. Vulcan and uh, all Vulcan and Romulan crew members, which there's no Romulan crew members, so no. it's just Vulcan. See, yes. Um, um I think crew we have... and civilian uh, as we well. Have, yeah, I think we have Teketh and Varen are, are the only main and civilians. Yeah. Vulcans. Yeah, because because Mar, Mar is no Mar longer is aboard. Not on board. Yeah, correct. Yep. 
Those are the only two main. There's like there's a few other. Right, presumably <laughs> some, you know. Yeah, there's extras. there's a number of we Vulcans but from under the bridge. Yeah, there's a few more Vulcans, but that's about it. Um, you've got maybe a do- half dozen total, including Teketh and Varen. So uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll check uh, their uh, where the, where the computer says they were at that time. Uh, okay. So then see if you know any alibis check out we we do have a pretty limited window in which they had to have been there yep uh we've been reports that Vren was in the archaeology lab um the other Mm -hmm. six vulcans were either in their quarters or or duty labs um and it reports that teketh was in um uh the kitchen area of the main um forward lounge okay so beyond secure or beyond computer id uh do are are any of them uh were any of them alone at the time at that time uh varen and teketh were both alone at that time and then those who were in their rooms well actually the ones in the rooms probably weren't alone because they're probably all lower officers so they at least bunk with one other person so sure uh well then um i think uh koba will go to uh orani and uh, say, uh, Commander Ambrose, uh, well, I've narrowed it down to two suspects. Uh, they're both Vulcans, the only Vulcans in the crew who uh, don't, don't have an alibi, don't have an alibi that checks out. Okay, what are we looking at? Well, Specialist Varen and uh, Teketh, the bartender. Could also have been a somebody stowing away. Uh, I can't uh, rule that out. But out of out of the crew that the computer is aware of, those are the only two that could have been there. It is definitely Vulcan DNA, or it's definitely Vulcan or Romulan DNA. The Romulan part of that equation concerns me. We obviously don't have any Romulan crew. Is it possible that, I'm sure it's in, entirely possible that a Romulan agent snuck aboard the ship since we've been docked? Uh, it is possible. It is. The ship usually identifies crew at the very least by comm badges. Let's see if we can get a general life sign scan of the ship and see if we can find anyone stowing away. If it is a Romulan agent, I'm sure, I'm sure they have a way around that, but see if we can scan for any pockets of the ship that, well, can't be scanned, that, that might have a blind spot or might have an echo. Sure. So I think I, uh, I think uh, um, Yezabeth would be the best perfect person to do that. Sure. Uh, so she gets calmed and she, she says, Wait, you want me to turn the sensors? The, you want me to turn our sensors to, into the ship? Yes, an internal an internal sensor sweep. Well, uh, that's. I mean, I can I can use the sensor pod. Uh, we'll get uh, tremendous amounts of resolution out of it. Uh, you know what? That sounds like fun. Um, let me let me see what I can do. And so she'll uh, go to the sensor pod and she'll like refract it up through using the the um, using the deflector array, um, and she'll turn the outboard sensors inward and uh, scan the ship for any life signs. Okay, um, I'm not. There's no role required for that. Um, but you definitely. I, I don't need you guys to generate too much. Uh, too much. Uh, momentum here <laughs> a little bit but um anyway the uh it, it doesn't take long for you to be able to do that um you do note though that there's going to be some areas of the ship that are going to be more difficult to scan um just because of the high the high energy output they put like the main engineering is harder to scan um stuff around the the main warp nacelles and the main warp core um, however those areas can be scanned pretty easily by hand um you do not detect any abnormalities uh, in the ship as far as life signs go. Um, so between a coordinated effort of uh, ship sensors as well as uh, hand sensors, we are able to determine that there's no additional people on there the are, ship. Yeah, there are presently no additional persons aboard ship that are not accounted for. There's no one hiding in the turbo, in the, in the, in the, 
you know, in the hidden parts of the ship. You've, right. you've, you, it takes a little while, but yeah, you can get a pretty good, uh, a 99.9% accurate accurate um, detailed scan of the ship. And there's a, a gnat down here. It's pissing me off. So I think uh, Yezabeth will uh, s- contact uh, Commander. Um, Commander, uh, I, I couldn't possibly be more certain, but I don't think there's anybody on the ship who's, who's not accounted for. Okay, I was almost hoping we had a breach. Good work, Ensign. Thanks. So, okay. um, whilst those scans are going on, and you guys are figuring out what you want to, what steps you want to take next, um, but during the scan, uh, Hage, mm-hmm. you receive a, a communication from. Uh, from Trill. Okay. Uh, I have to find the communication. Stand by. Sure. Um, so, <clears throat> oh crap, that's the wrong one. Here we go. Uh, so you were contacted by. Uh, someone you recognize as soon as they come on screen. Um, it's an older, very old man, probably early 90s. Um, his name is Andal. He is the um, he is the former husband of one of your previous hosts, um, which we discussed earlier. Um, you can see that he's he doesn't look well. Um, uh, he's, his eyes are sunken and his skin is paler than it would normally, have, you know, even for a man of his advanced age. Um, and there is a, a, a someone of likely to be a nurse behind him who looks um, displeased by his his insistence on this phone call being made. This this uh, this call being made. Um, uh, Calder, is that you, Calder? Uh, As he squints. He, Jorad will look um, visibly disturbed and he'll go, Andal, um, no, um, Calder, Calder's, Calder's deceased. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm Jorad, uh, I'm Jorad. Age, yes, um, Jorad, yes, I, I, I followed your career some. Um, uh, I'm not well, Age. And I have some belongings that I want you to have. Uh, It has been a long time since I've seen you. And I want... Come to Trill one time. I have things that belong to Calder. You're you're not well? What's wrong? Uh, Some damn thing the nurses... Tell me I've... And he, <coughs> <laughs> the nurse kind of comes up behind him and um, leans in and she just kind of shakes her head a little bit and uh, he's not... Um, it's a tumor and he's not long. She kind of cleans him up a little bit and sets him back up in the chair and then he kind of, you know, Gestures for her to get off of him and eh, leave me alone. Bastard. Always tampering and fiddling in places they don't belong. Doctors. You're not a doctor, are you, Hage? No, not, not in this lifetime. Small favors. Uh, come to Trill, Hage. Come. I'm afraid I'm quite far from Trill. Um, and even if I could, we both know that that's a bad idea. Damn the commission. I don't care about that. It's, you're not fraternizing with an old... I'm long past that. It's important to me, Hage. One time. Please. Tell me you'll come. He hesitates a long moment and then he says, I'm in the midst of a, 
I'm in the midst of something right now. Let me, perhaps when the situation is resolved, we can speak again. <laughs> um, he kind of nods and uh, yeah, he says, make it soon. And then he cuts off the camera. Uh, Jorab like brings his hand up and just like runs it over his face. He's he's obviously shaken up by this. Um, but then he says, uh, uh, l- "Sorry for the personal uh, communication." Uh, we've got an intruder just fine. Let's concentrate on that. All right. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to do? Back to Ambrose and whatnot for that, or uh, anybody else got anything else they want to do other than that? Um, I feel like Silva's going to do some looking around on her own. Okay. Because, you know, she wants to get in Starfleet intelligence. She knows the security team's not going to invite her on it, on any spy craft. Uh, so she's going to she's going to do some unconventional uh, looking around. All right, going to get some on your own investigation time in. Going to talk to Tong at all, or just kind of go do your thing? I think she's just going to do her thing. Um, like she'll um, trying to think of an interesting uh, way to do this. Um, where would you start? She wouldn't know as much as everybody else. Sure. But, um, I think she would, she would start at the communications logs. She would know that if somebody, uh, if the, if there was an infiltrator on board, they would have had to send multiple messages. So she's going to look for like embedded messages within uh, the communications log to see if she can come up with some kind of pattern that matches with like duty shifts. Okay. Um, that's going to be uh, an extended task, I think. Um, okay. Also, the difficulty is going to be two. Uh, okay. The work will be 10 because it's default. Um, the resistance on that is going to be three, though, because it's obviously encrypted stuff. Sure, yeah. Uh, and then the duration on it will be, let's say, an hour between rolls. Um, when she realizes the 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 enormity of the task, I think she'd try and get somebody to help her with this. Um, sure. Get again going out outside channels. Um, who are you gonna Who are you gonna go with? Who are you gonna reach out to? Anybody, anybody have any interesting ideas? I think it'd be Tom, actually. Okay. Uh, so Silva can approach Tom. We'll see how that plays out. Um, uh, um, Tong's, un- unless Tong is on, on duty doing something specific, he's probably just back in his room sulking. <laughs> sure. That'd be a good place to find him in Tong's mm-hmm. quarters. Shared shared ensign quarters with one, two, three other people. Uh, she'd uh, she'd chirp his door. Uh, yes. She comes in. She's like got a data pad, and she's just like patting it against her hand, and she's like, "Hey, how you doing? How are your lobes?" They're fine. Well, uh, good, because I've got a chance for you to redeem yourself if you're interested. Mm. Uh-oh. I seem to have frozen. I can still hear you, at least. We can hear you. Oh, you're good now. Good. All right. Yay. Uh, I, 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 I don't, I don't know, Lieutenant. Uh, Look, hey, 
I would have done exactly the same thing in your place. I know, I, I get why you didn't want to intervene anybody else, why you didn't want, why you didn't want to bring anybody else into it. I get it. But I think I've got an idea, but it's not my area of expertise. So I'm hoping we can work together and be, come to the captain or, or come to uh, or uh, come to Commander Ambrose and tell him we figured it out. Uh, no, that was the plan. Then, then let's do it. It doesn't have to be over. We just don't have to crawl through any air docks. I I suppose if uh, if uh, if a lieutenant were to uh, ask me for my professional assistance in in a matter to resolve this situation, I would be obligated as an ensign to oblige, uh, sir. That's the spirit. Now, uh, I've been trying to go over the communications log, looking for any uh, subcutaneous uh, uh, signals. I figure if somebody's been on board and it, they would have had to be able to be here a while to do as the amount of damage they've been doing. Maybe we can figure out who it is if they've been sending out any kind of outgoing messages. Uh, yes, yes, that, that was one of the, the first things I, I noticed. Uh, if I go back on these extensive notes I've taken over the past several weeks. <laughs> oh, these are fantastic. Well, let's see if we can't get through this encryption, figure out who's been sending this. Uh, uh, of course, uh, I, I uh, traced it through the power systems uh, to to uh, strange uh, things things used to relay a signal that really aren't designed to relay a signal. It really was incredibly in, in, ingenuitive uh, work. So whoever whoever is doing this has has a fairly expert grasp on on engineering systems uh, in a very unconventional. Uh, manner and also uh, access to very uh, expensive equipment. I wonder if they ever got that. Well, the one thing that they wouldn't have been able to get around is the fact that they'd have to be on duty sometimes. I brought the duty rosters. I brought the duty rosters for the last two months. I figure we can cross-reference and see if we can't figure out who it was that way. Well, it, it would take some time to, to shunt that amount of information through systems that aren't designed to have that amount of information. So if, if we can determine that somebody, you know, was, was not uh, accounted for in a, in a professional uh, capacity during uh, all of those extended times, that, that could narrow down uh, a suspect, yes. That's what I'm thinking, too. And she'll she'll plop herself on the bed next to him, and ha hand him the data pad, and uh, they'll they'll get to work. All right, go ahead and give me a roll. Uh, With Tong's assistance, or whoever wants to make the base roll, it doesn't matter. Uh, can I roll security for my roll with the espionage focus, or should it be? Yeah, I would say probably daring and. Uh, if you're doing it quickly, I'd say daring. If you're not doing it, if you're trying to do it thoroughly, it would be control. Trying to do um, it quickly. Yeah, so daring and security with uh, espionage. And then, Tong, you can probably do uh, either daring or reason or control. Either of those would really work, plus engineering. Okay. Uh, roll the... Uh, to spend a momentum. Mm, nice. Yeah, that is four successes. Five successes. Five successes. Six it, successes. It was hovering. It was hovering on that twenty, and then it rolled I, over to an eight. <laughs> I, I, you know, I watched it think about that for a yep. little too long. Yeah. Six successes. Six successes. Uh, hmm. where was I? Okay. So the difficulty was two. So you have four momentum. Go ahead and roll your. Uh, go ahead and roll your work track. I do not have. Any uh... talents or anything? Talents, yeah. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and four momentum. You have a resistance of three. Uh, we'll use one of those to decrease the uh, pe penetration. So um, so no. that'll give you that'll give you six with three momentum to spend. Yeah. So that's yeah nine total. If I put those if I put those towards work, which I will. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. You're making pretty good progress in your first hour of work. Um, you can definitely see uh, you've eliminated a, a, a lot of people in the first hour going through the data, especially considering you don't have, you know, Eva or anyone to assist with this. Um, the computer is not assisting at the moment. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll leave it there and see if we can find something else to do and come back to you guys. Okay. Um, I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see Evelyn get some game time. Uh, it feels like uh, Jack and I have been going back and forth for a while yeah. now. Good. Um, I have I have a good place for O'Connor to break in there if necessary. Uh, I actually have a place that... right now. Uh, we can have O'Connor step in right now if you really want to, because someone's gonna be looking after Eva or taking, yeah. you know, getting into the Eva stuff, and that's pretty much you. Yep. Yeah, you do that. Um, you and Hage probably actually. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I guess we're down in the shuttle bay since that's where Eva is. Oh, right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Either that, or if you want to be in the main core system, trying to figure out anything that's going on in there. Um, if you're talking sure. to Eva. If you want to talk to Eva, yes, yeah, it, it would be in shuttle. Uh, it would be in the underside of the ship in the actual, because the, the arrow wing actually attaches to the bottom of the saucer section. Sure. Um, much like the other uh, yachts, you know. No, that's fair. Um, yeah, I think we'd probably be in the computer core then. Okay. Which in the AI access control, which is where Coaster went and shut everything down. Yeah. Um, and then that's uh, Hage and O'Connor. Um, and I don't think... I don't think, uh, other than Tong, I don't think Jack has anybody who would fit in here. So, um, so what's that? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. So, um, so you're going over the the work one that Kostra did to turn her off. Um, also, how she managed to shunt herself into the you know to back herself up. She didn't really turn herself off. She didn't really relocate herself as much as back herself up into the uh, into the uh, the arrow wing in case something were to happen. Um, she is still somewhat active in the, she is still definitely active in the AI system. She just has no, no connection to anything. Um, so you, you can, you definitely can communicate with her inside of this control facility. <clears throat> um, the damage, the quote unquote damage that Coaster has done is completely reversible. Um, although some of it was done quickly, uh, mm -hmm. Not done recklessly, but clearly done in a in a in a rapid fashion. Um, so it, probably a little bit more than had to be taken offline was. Um, again, though, Coaster is not an expert in positronic systems and and whatnot, so it's to be expected and nothing that can't be reversed. Um, but yeah, uh, go ahead and give me to start with uh, a control and science role with a. Focus if you have it in either computer systems or positronic mm -hmm. systems. I have computer analysis systems, but that'll no. work. Okay. Can uh, he can he just assist with oh, guidance so he can assist with command? Yeah. Cool beans. Uh, I will use a focus in team dynamics. Please be nice. Nice. Thank you, babe. Is that two? Is that three for you? Uh, only two. Two, and then a third from Paige. So that succeeds with two successes. Uh, two, uh, sorry, two advantages. The difficulty was one. Um, yeah, uh, you managed to to um reestablish voice commands and that kind of thing. Um, obviously, Coaster never lost control of command functions. Uh, and you you can see that the systems that Eva um accessed 
without logged authorization was really only um, the 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 main systems that she was like she's accessed a lot of logs, but other than that, she hasn't accessed a whole lot of anything. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot what we actually said that caused the the shutdown. I don't remember. <laughs> I remember what it was, but I don't remember what it was. She um, decided she was. She felt she was being. Violated. Oh, she turned. She turned off the doctor, the EMH. The yeah. doctor was looking yep. into some connection between Dionasia and the Iconian situation. Mm -hmm. right. And then I and then Eva perceived that as a threat to her existence and shut him down. Right. Um so while you're searching her systems, probably I, I assume at least to figure out what that connection might be, mm -hmm. um, you don't find anything that would be particularly um egregious. Like she's there was nothing being like all the data is all there you can access it um what you see basically is just it appears as though uh him simply breaching her computer core like going into the per ai system to retrieve data was the mm -hmm. cause of the of the the breach not necessarily the information she was he was trying to access but the actual where the information is located is what uh, it appears because the information that you 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 locate the information, no problem, and you note that it's nothing of um nothing of consequence, really. I mean, it would help a doctor figure out some stuff, but it wouldn't be. It's not like mm -hmm. classified information or anything like that. So you guys can go from there. Age will say out loud, "It's it's strange. It's almost like a teenager slamming their door on somebody." Sort of. Um, <clears throat> I I see it more like. Sort of the natural reaction to having your mind probed. I suppose she didn't take any aggressive actions at us. She's she hasn't tried anything since then. Maybe we should maybe we should talk to her. She hasn't about. really been able to try anything since then. What doesn't make sense, sir, is the EMH is essentially part of Eva and she is designed to be essentially a large catalog of information. This should not have been considered a breach. Perhaps if well, they're, they're this, perhaps if if the access had been made by an unauthorized ship or an unauthorized user, but not by one of her own crew. Well, they're they're. Their data matrices might be the same, but their personality matrices are very different. It may be certainly that, it may be that Eva perceived a more emotional uh, breach rather than a logical one. Hmm. Which then again comes back to whether or not she's sentient. From a technical standpoint, they are separate. He's stored in a different core than she is. He is an independent program from her. Okay. Just, just so that's a. Yeah. She, he, she would view him most as more as a crew member than anything else. Okay. Do, do you find any signs that somebody, there was, I know there were some signs of tampering. Can you figure out who did the tampering and what they might have been trying to do? I can I can try to trace it. Um, did remind me, Jack? Did Tong in his initial st stammering debrief mention the um, device or not yet? Which of the many devices that Tong has found are you referring the to? The initial device that he found and the weird octopus baseball thing. Uh, not in his talk with Hage that would be okay. in his report which depending on the amount of time has gone past may have I, I feel like we would have read that probably okay yeah. at the very least Hage would have yeah well Hage, Hage would want O'Connor to know what's going on you sure yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, if I can examine that device I may be able to better pinpoint origin um and you remember, might have access. 
as mm-hmm. a reminder, you'll as a reminder to you guys, you also did uh, Tong and Daphine also mm-hmm. discovered the RNA sequence in the in the biogel packs, and Eva uses the biogel packs as part of her system. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking of. Um, okay. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if Evelyn remembered that or not. I did not. Yeah, uh, I think this is definitely a biogel pack issue. I mean, the the communication spy issue might be tangentially related. I'm not ruling out that it's not the same same person doing it, but I don't think mm-hmm. they're. Yeah, I think they're two different issues right now. We're focused on Eva right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But um, yes, I'm uh, uh, Tong and whoever he was working with. Daphine. Uh, yeah, Daphine. Daphine. Probably Daphine actually would have wrote that report. So you guys mm-hmm. would know about the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that O'Connor probably would. That, that's, that report would certainly be available to O'Connor because that's probably the reason you're down here. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, all right. I'll amend that statement a bit. Certainly. I, I can look into this, this RNA se- sequence in the gel packs and try and track down who would have the access and the authorization and um, the, the, the knowledge. Concentrate right now on what they were trying to do. Um, we'll leave the we'll leave the finding out who uh, soon. But let's figure out what let's figure out how this is affecting Eva so we can get her back online. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Anything else? Yeah, that's what you guys want to do in that scene. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just sound like you were gonna say something there, is all. So, um, all right. Um, late that later that well, actually, uh, we won't skip quite that far ahead yet. Let's go ahead and go back to uh, Tong and um, was it just who, who was helping him? Silva, the, Silva, right? Mm-hmm. Tong and Silva, uh, and finishing up that role to try to sort out some of that information. Uh, I'll use another momentum. Ah, much worse roll. My name, I luck wouldn't hold out. Uh, that is zero successes for me. Nope, I'm sorry, one success for me. Well, that is at least one success in assistance. That's two. Right. Two is all you needed. Uh, I am going to take those complication points and just put them banked. So. Okay. Uh, one, two, three is all you get there. But since uh, not enough to get through the yeah, resistance. the resistance is there. So you guys basically um, you hit a bit of a brick wall on the second hour. You're you're digging through and you're finding, but clearly whoever this is is um very very good at faking where they are. Um, you've got accountability for every person in every location for every time that they say they are. But you're also getting a shadow um, from time to time during the time periods. Like you're, you've you've located a number of transmissions, um, and you're trying to narrow down who could have sent them, kind of thing, right? That was your that was your plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you have found a number of transmissions, uh, maybe a, a half dozen or so transmissions over the course of a month or so. Um, there's a slight pattern to them, but it doesn't. It seems more of like a. Um, it's less of a pattern of when they're sent and more of a pattern of how they're sent. Um, like it's a different, it's a different, the pattern is that it is different almost every time and it's encrypted in a different subsystem each time. Um, so uh, what you're finding difficult though is you're able to account for every crew member at every, every crew member and civilian crew member uh, during each of the incidences. Um, however, there is usually a, a shadow in the uh, in the log prior to like within an hour or two prior to the actual message being sent meaning that someone is faking where they are and where they actually are so they're leaving either they're leaving their comm badge somewhere and going off somewhere or they're setting up some kind of bio f- energy field to to manipulate to 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 make it look like the sensors show the person being in the one place when they're actually somewhere else um, which is why it's you know you've hit this brick wall Okay. Uh, so if we do a little bit of role playing before we move on to the yeah, next, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so um, uh, Silva will will. I think by this point she's like, 
laying on Tong's bed with her, like her head hanging off the, the feet of the bed, like with the data pad upside down. And she's just going through it and she's seeing these shadows after shadows. And she's like, I haven't seen anything this sophisticated since the Obsidian Order. Well, I, I don't know much about the Obsidian Order, uh, sir, but yes, this this is about uh, where where I uh, met a bit of a, a a wall when I was attempting this on on my own. Uh, yeah, lot lot of lot of uh, information going a lot of different places, and none of it leading back to anyone specific. Oh, we're not gonna let that stop us. Uh, no, sir. Hey, can I ask you something? Uh, of course, sir. What's it like being a... You... Look, I know Star... Starfleet says that they're, you know, that Earth likes to pretend that they're past prejudice and all that, but you're a Ferengi. You've got to have some people who have prejudices, have, have, have certain assumptions about you, at least. How do you deal with that? Well, uh, it, it helps to wear the uniform, I suppose. Um, well, for, for some people, uh, not, not, not for others. Uh, not, not many Ferengi really, really appreciate this, the, uh, the Starfleet uh, uniform. It kind of goes against centuries and centuries of uh, you know, how our society has defined itself. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I suppose everybody else does, you know, see me as a, a Ferengi first and foremost. I, I, I suppose that 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 is true, but uh, I mean, there's 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 been a lot of very interesting reform on Ferenginar the past uh, few few years or so. Um, so uh, may, maybe maybe reputations will will change. Uh, I well. You know, um, I think you're. I think you're doing your part to change it. Um, I know a lot of people I've met seem to see Frangri differently now that they've seen you. Right. Uh, I I just I just try to live up to the expectations of a Starfleet officer. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess for some people it's easy. Some people it's hard. I, I know I've had trouble uh, trying to fill the shirt, you know? It's a difficult shirt to fill. Starfleet has a history of quite exceptional people. Yeah, definitely that. That's that. I think that's a good place. Yeah, yeah, that's good for you. Good for me. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to do real quick, or no? Okay, I'll take that as a no. We might want to go back to the interrogation of the Vulcans. Uh, uh, we will get back to that. Okay. Um, first, though, um, Commander Ambrose, uh, you mm. receive a message from the station. Okay. Uh, sub commander comes on the screen. Uh, commander Ambrose, uh, I trust that things are going better on the Europa. I've heard you've had some kind of security crackdown. Uh, routine personnel check. Everything, everything aboard ship is exactly as it should be. Of course it is. Um, I was wondering then, since nothing pressing has you occupied, if you would be willing to meet with me. I have some things I want to discuss with you. I can make time for that, of course. Thank you. I'll see you soon. And she sends you a, a location for a meet. Okay. Uh, Gonna go to that, or do you want to guys? Do you want to jump back to something else on the ship? Let's go back to the Vulcans real quick while we got that going. While Ambrose is headed over, headed over there. 
Um, who was interrogating the Vulcans? Cobra, maybe? Maybe Mills? I don't know. I'm the only one who doesn't have a Vulcan, so I feel like it should be Cobra. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, let's do... Uh, I need to keep these here. Player characters. Okay. So let's do... Um, Vren yep. and Koba can go start on that one. I say, if we don't want to interrogate them together, which we probably strategically should not, we could have Koba and Mills interrogate Bren, and then Mills needs to get called away to deal with the thing or shore up security somewhere else or whatever, leaving Koba to interrogate Tekka. That's fine. So you guys are in. Uh, I assume you've invited Vren not to the to the to the brig, but to somewhere right. less. Um, You're invited to the brig. <laughs> you are invited to the brig. <laughs> you are cordially invited to sit in this box. Um, so we'll say that you're like one of the, one of the security offices, no mm-hmm. doubt. Um, and therein you are. We're probably in one of those little conference rooms. Right. Um, so let's go over this again. Where were you at the time uh, at tw- uh, at 1644 ship time? I believe at that uh, that specific hour, I was in one of the research labs performing uh, my duties looking into the Iconian incident and any related historical documentation that I might be able to enlighten uh, the staff on. I see, I see. Do you always do your investigations all alone? Nobody nobody else there to see where you're going? As I'm sure you are aware, I am not an official member of Starfleet and therefore not necessarily bound by your specific regulations and schedules. This is as much of a pet project to me as it is a professional duty. Well, maybe you can satisfy some curiosity for me. What made you want, what, what made you want to go onto a Starfleet ship in the first place? You are, you are a civilian after all. I am also an archaeologist and a xenoanthropologist, and the best way to visit other planets and learn of their histories is to actually visit them through space transportation. I see. Have you ever studied the Romulans? He does air quotes. Have you ever studied the Romulans? Studied the Romulans? Uh, Of course. Uh, Romulan history is as much as we know of it, is well taught on Vulcan. They are a distant relation to ours, and the political connections between our two people have been growing in importance. And if a Romulan was to come to you and say, oh, let's have closer relationships, all we need you to do is plant a few bugs in this starship, what would your response be to that? I would respond that that is a highly illogical way to pursue a mutually beneficial relationship. What would be a logical way to pursue a mutually beneficial relationship? I know the, from from my, granted, not direct understanding, the relationship between the Romulans and the Vulcans is tepid at best. I suppose you could say that. I apologize. Was there a question there that I missed? What would be the logical way to pursue a relationship to? Well, if your hypothetical situation extends specifically to myself and the Europa, there are indeed Vulcan ambassadors on this station who would be able to approach myself or most likely an actual member of Starfleet, uh, specifically likely the diplomatic corps. Other than that, personal relationships aside, anything beyond, say, your 
friendly lunch would have to go through the proper channels. And what if somebody decided you were the proper channel? Would you report it to Starfleet Security? I am certainly not the proper channel. But no, a, but as as you pointed out, you are not held to the same regulations and standards as Starfleet. If a Romulan infiltrator were to attempt to sabotage or spy on the ship, you might be the most logical choice. I fail to see the logic in that. As you said, relations between our two people is tepid at best. As a non-Starfleet officer, I have very limited access to the ship and carry very little weight uh, between its crew and the administration of Starfleet itself. If they, My expertise is mainly through Vulcan history and the history of Federation planets, most of which is well-documented in Federation databases. I would be a most illogical contact for a spy. You have access enough and you are well renowned in your field and well respected and brown outs. But if I somebody might lose were, power. If somebody were to come to you, you would report it to Starfleet, is what you're saying. Of course. Have you seen any other of your fellow Vulcans acting suspiciously? Any of them doing anything? Unvulcan. Vulcans do not tend to act suspiciously, and I'm not sure how a Vulcan would act unvulcan. Where did we last uh, leave off with everyone? We talked about this a second ago, but uh, no one was listening then. So, have you got anything? Uh, we had just finished the interrogation of Varen. Uh, Koba and Mills were questioning her. Um, Ambrose had gotten an invitation back to Narenda from Subcommander Toshari. Uh, and Maybe I'll I suppose we should talk about why we're, we're interrogating the Vulcans because uh, Silva and Tong had been looking at um the communication logs and all the weird and had uh silva had said they had or they had determined it was definitely vulcan and romulan in origin um she hasn't silva said she hasn't seen anything that sophisticated since the obsidian order uh, so they decided we we scanned for any anomalies and the only Vulcans pinging on the ships or ship are the ones that are supposed to ping on the ship. We didn't come up with any un or unaccounted for life forms. So we put a lockdown on the ship and are going through and integrating all the Vulcans. Right. And Toshiri very kindly contacted us to let us know that she'd heard about the security crackdown and was very, very concerned. Yep. No is that, any is that specifically Ambrose, or is that the whole ship? I don't remember. Uh, she, was, was, spe she specifically had a uh, call out to Ambrose. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was a one-on-one -on -one just with Ambrose, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition to that, there was some stuff going on, some chicanery with uh, Eva that I believe Hage and someone was involved with. Uh, O'Connor. O'Connor, right? Yep. Um, we hadn't gotten very far with that, I don't think. Um, no, we had determined that it was not the information that caused Eva to shut down, but the actual, um, I think the actual accessing the information is what she determined as a breach. Um, I believe the term she used was violation. Violation, yes. We were looking in... Um, into the RNA change to determine what uh, the RNA change was intended to do. Right. And I think that's where we left off with that. Weird diseased biogel pack. Yes. Right. Right. Um, that was an brain funky. 
Right. That was a extended task that we had not yet completed. Mm -hmm. um, anything else we're missing? Anybody got anything else we missed? I think that pretty nice covers most I don't everything. Think so. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. So, um, yeah, the the interrogating the Vulcans was a result, a direct result of Secret Agent Tong. Yes. Uh, and whatnot. So, um, let's start with um, let's start actually with uh, dealing with the o the the O'Connor and Hage. Um, looking into the. Oh, let me fix that. The RNA sequence. Um, you guys can, we'll start out with a quick roll. That way, if we got to build up some momentum, we can do it qu quick and early. Um, you guys were in the one of these type thing things. It wasn't this one, but whatever. This is close enough. Um, so give me, a, give me a quick roll. Uh, uh, and all my stuff here. Um, I have just totally broken this. So, um, give me a roll. Uh, the roll should be uh, what we were talking about reason and reason and science earlier, I think. Or yeah, I think um, so. Yeah, I think reason and science with a a side of some kind of engineering. Uh, can I assist with command? Uh, yeah, I believe we were we had allowed that before. We're gonna change that. I I have the advisor uh, trait with or the advisor calendar, so let's reroll. Um, or well, uh, O'Connor can reroll if uh, they choose to. If I assist okay. with command, right. And I presume my newfound focus of positronic systems will apply here. Yeah. I assist. I get a complication. Uh, you, can re you can oh, reroll yeah. that. You can oh, yeah. reroll that. Let's reroll that. To a 20. Much uh, better. Seven. So Two that's successes. a three total, I think. Three total. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, that'll give you guys two additional questions or momentum, your Ooh. choice. Oh, no. Two. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the RNA sequence that you guys, that, that'll, that'll actually... That'll pretty much succeed. Go ahead and roll the work, but I'm pretty sure you're going to succeed because you only have a difficulty of two, so that would be one. Um, you have one momentum, and you have one work remaining, So, and you have, you'll get all your thresholds here. So go ahead and give a work roll just for the sake of completeness. That's just my science, right? No, it's science plus... It's two, I think, two plus your science. Two plus science, okay. That. So nice. eight. Oh yeah, no, you definitely have destroyed that. Um, even even barring resistance and everything else, you've succeeded in that. So you don't even need to spend your momentum for anything. Um, so uh, after dealing with the, the RNA, you get in there, you know, nice and deep into the RNA like you do. Um, and what you discover is that the sequences specifically are eroding pathways between data. They're essentially like, um, it, it's essentially working in a, a similar way to something like dementia. It's, it's destroying mm -hmm. pathways between memories. The data is still there. It just can't be accessed by the AI. Okay. Um, and specifically, it looks to be dealing with certain types of communications and things like that. It is clearly there to 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 mask the sending of data um, external to the ship. So um, you you can backtrack a lot of the 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 um, where the data path should be. And you can yep. see that it is, in fact, it is blocking essentially the logs that Tong was searching for earlier. Okay. Um, the, the logs of where the, uh, uh, of messages being sent and where they would be sent from. So you will have access to some of that information. 
which I think is something Tong and um, Daphine were also working on. Tong and Silva. Tong and Silva, right. Can it be reversed? Yeah, a new gel pack. Well, reverse, no, but a new gel pack being put in would be fine. It okay. The, Wait, what do you mean? Problem. Hold on. When, when you say it, it can't be reversed, what does that mean? She, you have to, she can't just, I mean, the information is already there. She can't just rebuild. Can't the recreate pathways. the pathways, but a new gel pack will, with the already there pathways, will fix the problem. Yeah. Okay. She eventually will regain, like, it, it's, there's no harm done to, to Eva specifically. It is um, just that there are neural pathways that are not there anymore. She has memories she can't get back. Um, she could then, she could create new ones. Um, and as long as the gel pack is not there, it will not automatically delete those pathways. Okay. Um, would it be possible for a, a project at a later date to save this damage gel pack and experiment on it? Sure. Okay. Um, so Con O'Connor at one, at some point, just a side note, will be keeping that gel pack to try and study, um, how these how this happened and and how it can be reversed eventually right okay well you guys as i said you find you find the information you're looking for basically um at least you understand how it's done like there's this mm. will help this will certainly help the the, the ensigns uh the ensign and the lieutenant anyway um complete their investigation because it gives them a much narrower brand uh, field of of places to search so uh, okay. i don't know if you guys have anything else you want to to, to, to role play there or does this without bringing Eva back online does this give us an idea of why she felt violated probably not seems okay. to be unrelated okay all the messages captain I will replace this with a new gel pack and that should fix the essentially synapse issue um, as to Eva shutting down the C the EMH um, and feeling violated. I don't I don't think we'll get that answer until we boot her back up. All right, well, uh, before we boot her back up, uh, I want you to check every other gel pack to uh, do a level three di diagnostic. I want every single one checked uh, to make sure that none of the others are affected the same way. The last thing we need is to bring her back uh, and then to, to, for it to spread once again. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, nothing else with that scene? No. All right the intro hopefully this works i had to move stuff around with the new google drive so let's see if the intro works <laughs> Clearly not. Clearly. Uh, I find that logic specious, but. Logical, <laughs> <laughs> Captain. Um, so, Ambrose, uh, you are on Narendra Station. Um, you head out to, to meet with um, the sub commander. Uh, and the, the location that she invited you to, to meet her with is, meet her at, is a. Um, a much lower deck uh, lounge. 
Um, when you get there, it's extremely clean and um, uninhabited. It doesn't look like it's really hardly ever used. Um, but uh, it's got a nice view of, you can see the Europa from there uh, and uh, all the outgoing, all the things that are going on outside. It's one of those uh, 360 degree views. All right, I think we're back. That was a weird power failure. Not power failure, but power failure. Weird failure of some sort. Um, this is what happens when you mess around with Eva. Um, anyway, so where we left off was uh, the lower lounge um, that Ambrose has been invited to with Toshari. Um, the subcommander is sitting at a, da a table um, alone. There are no other... Um, there are no other officers, no other, there's no one else in the room. It's just the two of you. Um, and uh, as you enter the room, she smiles and kind of gestures. Uh, and sitting in front of her, there is a um, a glass. Sitting in front of her and sort of in front of where you would be sitting, there is a glass. Um, my image is back up here. Uh, ah, Commander Ambrose, I'm so glad, so, so pleased that you were able to join me. Or sub commander, I always have time for uh, meeting with somebody as important as yourself. Ah, of course. Um, T, she gestures to the like cup in front of you. Thank you. Um, I tried. I tried to remember what tea Ambrose likes, and I cannot remember. I remember it was tea, but I can't remember what it was. But that is the tea that is in front of you. Okay. It's uh, it's it's an English, uh, a dark English breakfast with milk and honey. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking Darjeeling for some reason, but then I realized that was me. We have uh, drink preferences on the character sheet. Mm -hmm. That's right. I knew it was somewhere. I just couldn't remember where they were. Like I was looking for it, and we keep yeah. all the important things on that sheet. All so the important stuff. All the important. So, oh yeah, drink of choice: breakfast, English breakfast, tea with milk and honey. Milk and it doesn't tell me what. It just says milk and. Um, so yeah, that is what is in front of you. I hope it is to your liking, sub -commander, uh, uh, commander. Sorry, wrong rank, wrong wrong service. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it wasn't another damn demotion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's something like of a promotion, actually. Sub commander is equivalent to nearly um, captain, essentially. Um, again, I'm I'm grateful for your time. Uh, how does the search go for your um, security violation? Sort of raise an eyebrow at her because last I reported everything was a okay. <laughs> yes, uh, we're looking into some things. I'm not going to bother denying a minor security breach, it's something that's been reported to the station, and we're handling it. Most excellent uh, with all the potential security risks that that everyone must deal with on a daily basis. It is um, no slight against a ship such as the Europa to only have had the one so far, that I'm aware of anyways. <sighs> on a personal note though, Commander, how have you been? It's been some time since I've seen you, since our tour of the Europa. Yes, I suppose it has. We've been kicking around this edge of space for a while now. It's been an interesting time. We found some interesting things. Uh, and then, of course, war broke out, so I'm right at home. I can only imagine. It's a shame, really. The peace between the Federation and the Romulans and the Klingons was nice while it lasted. Well, I don't think that's necessarily over. We're, we're dealing with a small rogue problem that should be cleaned up quite quickly should we all work together, as we've demonstrated before in the face of a much more dangerous opponent. A much more direct opponent, not necessarily more dangerous. How much do you know, Commander, about what is going on beyond the Klingon uh, troubles? 
it's a fairly direct question for such a public unofficial location. It's a very secure location. And honestly, uh, if you are right about some of the things that you believe you are right about, then time may be a factor. I'm not one for being incredibly coy. You know my stance. I think we can all work together here, and I think it benefits all of our people. I'm not going to play this game of cat and mouse with Romulan intelligence and whatnot. You know things, we know things. Yes, uh, this Klingon insurrection group, and that really is what it is, is going after Iconian technology, and they seem to be quite far along in the process, and we have on good authority that they've been moving in and out of your empire to a world that is most likely Iconia. That's a problem for everybody. Indeed it is. Everything that I can find seems to corroborate your belief. However, uh, there is a very dangerous element in play that should I be able to help you could, could very easily result in a Romulan civil war which would be far worse, I think, than this Klingon insurrection. I think the Romulans have done a very good job of concealing just how close you've been to civil war for a very long time now. You know a great deal. She takes a, a, a sip of her drink and looks down at it. There is an agent aboard your ship. I have placed them there with the intent of gaining as much knowledge as I can about your ship, but far more important to be a counterpoint to any Tal Shi'ar intelligence that may be interested in your vessel. I have no doubt you will find my agent when you do. I wanted you to know who they worked for. So you're willing to inform me that you've been actively spying on a Federation vessel, yet you won't divulge who this agent is. This isn't a game we're playing. I'm sure it would be fun for everyone to poke around and play investigator, but we're on a time crunch here. There are important matters in this sector that need to be dealt with. I do not disagree. Tell me, Commander, what do you know of the Bajoran orbs? I was stationed on Bajor for quite some time. It was the front of the Dominion War for quite some time. I have not had a direct orb experience before, but I know a bit about the religious significance of these artifacts. She just kind of looks at you intensely, with, with, with a great deal of intense, uh, an, an intense look for several seconds. And I'm, then I'm, gonna, of, I'm not going to press, but I'm going to, I mean, she's Romulan, so she could just kind of wall me off. But if, she, if she's trying to, to convey something or send something, I want to I throw up my psychic radar. Sure. Um, you have a hard time, as before with her, you have a hard time getting mm -hmm. anything from her. Um, but there's definitely um, a deep curiosity that she has at the moment um, directed towards you. I must say that, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, this is a fairly quick turn to our conversation. What brings up Bajoran religion? I was hoping you could answer that question yourself, Commander. I have had 
recent experiences with an orb. However, I do not believe that is necessarily relevant to the conversation as you suggested. She kind of goes back to putting her, back to sipping her tea. I simply had a, a theory to test, Commander. The Bajoran orbs work in ways from what I, what I understand. They're not direct and they're very hard to interpret, especially for somebody who has not read their scriptures or are all that ingrained in the faith behind it. Of course, that sort of logic is thrown out the window when you consider the emissary, if you want to refer to him as such, was a human federation. Yes. I have never been to Bajor. I do not know any Bajorans. But I have seen a connection. Having more tech problems over here. Uh, I have seen a connection with the orb, and I suspect that... I have seen a connection through the orb, and I suspect that it has something to do with our current situation. Or maybe it does not, but better safe than sorry. Well, it's something we'll have to be aware of. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to predict how an orb experience will influence anything. Agreed. However, as a result of in an effort to better understand all the things that I have in front of me, I am going to assist the Federation. That is incorrect. I'm going to assist you, Commander. This would be something that is outside the scope of my position on the station. But I'm going to assist you in reaching Iconia. She sets her tea down for a second and pushes a button on her wrist and off to your side, out of out the port window, decloaks a large Romulan warbird. Stop. Um, I always assume there's at least one of those out there. Yes. Uh, one of these. Not a large, large Romulan warbird, but a big Romulan warbird. Like compared to the Europa, yeah, it's about it, so it's a little bit bigger than a like a um, cavort. So it's about the size of the Europa. Okay, maybe it, maybe a little bit smaller. Um, and then we'll go ahead and put the scene on hold for a second, and go to. Uh, the interrogation. And hope to God I'm pacing this correctly, which I'm probably not. Um, so I think we wrapped up that interrogation. Uh, you wrapped up the one with Vren. Yeah. Uh, so she, we, yeah, she we, was going to join. Them. She was going to join an interrogation with the, with the group to interrogate the next Vulcan. Okay, I think three people interrogating might be a bit much. So Kobo will Kobo will sit that sit this out. Okay. Sitting the, I mean, he could be sitting behind the screen watching. Sure, yeah. Um, so we had. Uh, I lost track of all. Oh no! Wait. Uh, oh, are we going to be interrogating NPCs? Or yeah, this will be interrogating yeah. a Vulcan. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. So. Um, Cool. Yeah, we, we didn't talk about this idea much. I just kind of threw it out there in the middle of the night one time because I couldn't sleep and then we didn't That's really fine. get back I, to it. So I don't know where we were going with this. I just, you know. It was just, I think it was mostly going. an opportunity for Varen to get a little bit more screen time um, and mm -hmm. possibly um, possibly throw a, 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 a red yeah. herring in there, although that's probably not going to happen now. So it's because I have had, uh, I've had a character already tell you there is clearly a, 
a, a spy on board. So we'll resolve that shortly. Um, but Specials of Ren and oh, Koba is over here behind the glass sneaking around. Let me put this somewhere where I can, he can sneak. Well, um, Mills is there, I assume, right? Yeah, Mills is still there. There, Koba is. I feel like Koba's version of sneaking is, you know, walking around quietly, muttering to himself about how well he's sneaking. Yes. He's doing, he's doing I am the best piece. at sneaking. This is he's, he's, he's just suspicious. Yeah, don't be don't. suspicious. No, don't be <laughs> suspicious. <laughs> Yeah, that's totally Koba. Mm-hmm. Here, I'll put him behind he's, Mills he's that the way. the Drax it's... of sneaking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There. All right. So uh, you bring in one of the other Vulcans. Um, uh, I'm going to say Lieutenant uh, uh, Tamarack. Because I've been wanting to use that name for a while. Okay. Uh, it's a name of a road in Toledo that I drive by all the time. And I'm thinking, ah. that would make a good Vulcan name. And so here it is. Um, Vulcan Tamarack. Um, Tamarack is a lieutenant. He has been serving in Starfleet for some time. Um, and he is known to, um, he is in the science di- division, but he is known to be quite proficient with, um, replicator technology and, transporter technology and stuff of that nature. So it kind of fits the most, uh, next most appropriate uh, uh, suspect. So um, he is sitting quite straight, straight backed. Uh, His uniform is quite neatly pressed. His hair is uh, immaculately Vulcan uh, and his ears appear to be slightly waxed and shined because Vulcans. Officer Mills. Lieutenant. I trust this will be a short interrogation. Gotta find a better accent than that. That's entirely up to you. I am, of course, willing to be as cooperative as possible. Specialist Varen, it is good to see you. As he holds up the the live long and prosper thing. (coughs) It is agreeable as well. Please, proceed with your questions. As you know, there has been sabotage aboard, above the sh- aboard the ship, uh, discovered by a member of your own team. There seems to have been some sort of communication device cleverly disguised as transporter tech, in a way. He raises an eyebrow. Or rather, disguised to make it look as though someone was using, I, I am sorry, I misspoke, replicator, not transporter. Uh, disguised to look as though a replicator was being used to send out communication. Well outside my wheelhouse, but very well within yours. Indeed. That is a great amount of, it would take a great deal of technical skill, certainly within my purview and my ability. Yes. How long have you been in Starfleet, Lieutenant? I have been in Starfleet twice. This is my second tour, uh, my second uh, enlistment in Starfleet. Uh, I have for a grand total of six years. Was there a gap in your service or did you re-up immediately? There was a, about a 15 year gap in my service. And what were you doing during that gap? I had returned to Vulcan with the intent of assisting my wife in raising our child. With the intent, but. But unfortunately, um, our child was lost. My condolences. What happened? A war with the Dominion happened. How old was he? He had been on Vulcan uh, for 14 years when he passed, when he was killed. 
where had he been prior to Vulcan? He was born on a starship. A Federation starship. My wife and my son spent approximately one year on a Starfleet vessel. We both, my wife and I, left Starfleet to raise our, our, our child until his death. It made logical sense to return to Starfleet since I no longer had the obligation of my family. Good way to get revenge, too. Revenge is a very human emotion and it's quite illogical. The Dominion War is already over. There are definitely pockets of people who think otherwise. For some, the Dominion War will never be over. I have heard this argument before. I suspect that there are some aboard this ship who believe the same. I am not one of them. Nels just looks at, looks to Varen and kind of nods toward the lieutenant. He looks at Vren. It is always unfortunate when a family loses a child. They are very important to our continued existence. My condolences on your loss. He nods slightly. It must be a trying time, even for our people. Especially knowing that such a thing could happen aboard a starship or above or aboard one of the most secure original members of the Federation. That must have been taxing. It was definitely a troubling experience. The knowledge that the vulnerabilities, uh, that we are exposed to such vulnerabilities despite the fact that we have such advanced technologies and safety measures in place, that the Federation provides a certain level of perhaps false security. However, it is my intent and my purpose in Starfleet to help ensure that those grievous errors are resolved as quickly as possible. An admirable goal if it is one that can be ever really achieved. All we can do is strive for perfection. I suppose then you would agree that it is quite unfortunate the most recent lapse in that security resulting in this meeting. Agreed. It is a continuation of the troubling notion that I have otherwise been seated with. This ship should be far more secure and any breach of its security is a poor reflection on its officers and the Federation. I suppose then you must take some in some small way personal accountability for such a breach being one of the experts aboard this ship in a central piece of the technology that was compromised. I do find it interesting that it was one of the ensigns underneath your charge that got so far in this investigation when apparently you had not. It is in fact a uh, further, further, uh, further amount of disheartenment, disheartenment. Ensign Tong has been, from what reports I have read, quite diligent in his efforts. I was unaware of the breaches that he had discovered and that Ensign O'Connor, or sorry, Lieutenant O'Connor nope. has... Ensign. Oh, I thought she was Lieutenant. Nope. Oh, Silva's nope, Lieutenant. lieutenant. Yeah. That too. Silva's Lieutenant, yeah. 
Um, and put your guys' ranks on your on your things over here too. So, um, the ensign uh, O'Connor also uh, has proven herself very efficient in her investigation. It is a testament to our training program in Starfleet. I unfortunately do feel some responsibility for the failure to discover it myself. Bren raises an eyebrow. You clearly take a lot of pride in your work. As one should. Pride is the incorrect word, but... One's, one's work is a reflection of oneself. I wish that that work reflect well for myself, well, well for me. Oh. Bren does nod back at, at Mills. Were we to presume that this particular piece of espionage and sabotage were your own work, that is certainly a testament to your capability and to your to yourself, as you said. Perhaps, but it would be illogical for me to take credit for something that I did not do or to feel any kind of satisfaction from a from a job that I did not perform. Being unable to locate this espionage, as you put it, is more of a reflection of my inability than, than it is not. By, had I, had I uh, performed these breaches, it would be definitely a skilled performance and one that would be quite satisfying. The satisfaction I do, I do not feel the satisfaction though, as I did not do this. I'm trying to, I have no way to say that without sounding really stupid, so I said it as stupidly as I could. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to be Vulcan sometimes. Yeah, right. Hmm. I understand your concern, Lieutenant. Uh, 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 yeah, you're Lieutenant, right? Yes. Bill's Lieutenant? Yeah. I understand your, your concern, Lieutenant. And I wish you all the luck in finding your culprit. Do you, do you believe that I am responsible? Would be, I believe I it would be logical. However, I'm not an officer of this ship. I believe it would be off, uh, logical that given any amount of suspicion and his expertise that he do be confined to quarters until this matter is resolved. I think be... you are correct, Specialist. And to answer your question, Lieutenant, uh, to use your own way of thinking with no mockery intended, it would be illogical of me to come to any sort of conclusion before we've completed our investigation. I agree. I am a likely suspect. I do lack the, I, I do, I do possess the ability and the opportunity. Indeed. He just, kind of, he just kind of nods. These officers will escort you back to your quarters, and I will let you know when the investigation is finished. Thank you for your time. If you have any more questions, Lieutenant, please. Specialist Varen. He kind of nods. And then is escorted out. If you guys have anything else you want to do, Koba. Koba obviously watched all of that. Mm 
So you can you can hop in there in that conversation if you want to. Otherwise, we can jump on jump back to the next scene. Um, Mills will turn to Varen. You know, obviously, Vulcans far better than I. It's difficult. for me to come to a conclusion one way or the other. Every time I think I have an answer nailed down, the opposite argument is immediately thrown in my face. Um, he, he makes a good point that with his logic that, or with his beliefs that your work is a rep representation of who you are, that were he that were he our suspect, he would feel pride, but he does not. At the same time, uh, the Romulans are nearly as well schooled at maintaining an even keel demeanor as the Vulcans. So he could very well be lying and lying well. What do you think? If you are indeed on the hunt for a Romulan spy, specifically one who may be from the Tal Shiar, you are correct. It would be very difficult to ascertain them from any deep cover that they wish to put themselves in, whether it be Romulan, human, Klingon. They are quite well trained from what I understand. However, he did behave in a most logical manner agreeing with your points offering counterpoints and still still resigning to the proper security measures without any argument of course with the skills shown by our saboteur even within their own quarters could still be quite problematic but at least easier to surveil. Yes. I do believe it would be most illogical for an embedded operative to fabricate such an emotional story as the loss of one's child, as it is quite difficult to contain. I believe he did so appropriately. So either that story was not a fabrication or he was turned after such a fact was irrelevant. Or he was able to maintain his composure because the story was complete bunk. Hard to get worked up over something that isn't true. There are minor tells that Vulcans have. I'm sure you are aware that we are not without emotion. Of we course. simply do a very good job of hiding it. I do not doubt that he suffered a loss. I also do not doubt that that loss has been processed appropriately. Unfortunately, I don't believe it can ever be entirely possible. To break through the mental discipline of either a Vulcan or a Romulan, you will need some other corroborating evidence beyond insightful interrogation analysis. I think you are completely right. I think the difference between a well-trained Romulan spy and a Vulcan are very, very small. I believe it is the personal touches that you need to look for. You may not be aware, but Romulans are extremely attached to their families. I believe even the creation of such a story would instill some amount of even hypothetical emotional response from a Romulan. 
Cobra will say, I've got an idea. This is going to sound crazy. But what if we get a turtle, put it upside down, have him walk by the turtle, see if he picks it up. If he picks it up, mm, run him. What? What? Because <laughs> emotion. Because Vulcans don't feel emotion. So they would just pass on by the turtle. But wouldn't I, I forgive me for speaking for your people, Varen? Wouldn't a Vulcan also see that a life form is in distress and it would logically make sense to flip it over? I think the most logical counterpoint to this argument would be to question why there is an upside down turtle aboard a starship. Or a turtle at all. I hadn't figured that. It would be extremely suspicious. Fair enough. Fair Don't enough. Be Let's, suspicious. We'll move, we'll move on to plan B. <laughs> As he puts Turtle back in his cage. <laughs> <laughs> Mills is laughing. I am laughing in character and out of character. You have actually broken Mills out of her super professional I'm on the clock demeanor. I, I am doing my my best Tuvok impression here, trying to keep mm. myself contained. <laughs> we'll well. Um, compose this yourself. We will keep that in our back pocket, I suppose. Well, maybe we should continue with the interrogations, maybe talk to somebody else for an hour, and then we can always circle back to this one. Yes. What do we have left? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, the bartender, Tekken. Yep. Well. I do find it unusual that a Vulcan would serve upon a Federation vessel as someone so integral to your human social structures. It is not a profession that most Vulcans would strive for. Not only mm. do we do very little drinking, but we do not socialize in the manner that a bartender usually facilitates. Well, on, on Bolia, our bartenders are some of the most respected people on the planet. According to like the roster, I believe he is only half Vulcan. Maybe his human side likes being social and making drinks well uh how about i go ahead and how about i take this one mills uh i and uh dr bren uh and uh you can you can watch us from the from the window this time all right but leave the turtle in your pocket uh look it's uh, just in case it never hurts to have a turtle that's what my my mama always used to say Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she will exit the room. Um, okay. I was going to do something else before that, but we'll just jump right into that because that actually makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, um, some other things happen in the sidelines that are all like, you know, commercials and whatnot. Sure. Um, and then uh, with those sultry eyes down there to. And when you isolate her eyes, they're way too sultry. They are a little. Um, so uh, we'll come back into Teketh, uh and Varen and Koba. And this is really all you guys. So um, the, 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 the bright lights of the interrogation room are shining down on the, the Vulcan and his... His cake makeup is sweating slightly, but uh, all four of them. <laughs> yes, all four of them. It's amazing how much that picture looks like a Vulcan. That Varen picture, in she doesn't mm -hmm. have pointy ears. Like you see the Vulcan in that face. I yeah, worked no really hard ears. to make that. <laughs> yeah, it's well done. It's good. So, all right, uh, go ahead. Well. Is that well. It? So, uh, bartender, uh, 
um, an odd job for a Vulcan to have, don't you think? You are certainly not wrong. So why, what made you decide to pick up the, pick up the marble glasses, as we like to say on uh, Olia? When one faces tragedy, even as a Vulcan, there comes a point that too much is too much. I felt a change of scenery was in order. And the Europa has provided just that. It's got to be hard being away from your family like that. Had I had any family left, I would agree with you. Did something happen to your family? Indeed, my wife died of choricetosis about a year before I joined the Europa. Well, I'm sorry for your loss. It seems to have, that's a, that's a rather emotional response to to run off into the middle, into the, the, the ass end of space in response to a death like that. There was nothing left for me on Vulcan. He'll turn to Varen. It has been a rough time for many of us, whether it be through our own personal tragedies or the tragedies of war. You must have other family, however. Parents? Siblings? My parents passed away years and years ago. That is unfortunate. It is. It can be difficult to lose one's one's parents at such a young age. It was their time. From what I understand, you were only half Vulcan. I hope it is not too much of a personal question, but as a student of history and various cultures, I am curious what your other, the other side of your upbringing entailed. An appreciation for the finer things in life for the creative side, which well, Vulcans do appreciate creativity in a much more subtle form. Do you like things being subtle? Is that a particular sphere of interest for you, subtlety? Not particularly. So who do you write to? Your, uh, fam your uh, family's all gone, wife's gone, uh, no kids, I assume. So who do you write to off the ship? I don't. So you're telling me if we were to search all the records, we wouldn't find a single thing from you. You would not. Well, we'll just have to check those records, I suppose. Understandably so. The crew here keep me as company as I need it. That was a weird way to word that. Vulcaning is hard today. Vulcaning is hard today. 
I pass my time creating new new themes for the lounge, trying to cater to everyone's tastes. This is a small crew, luckily for me and my creative juices, but it is a varied crew. Yeah, I find that frustrating sometimes having uh, such a demanding crew. You're not demanding. Not demanding in the way you mean it. More inspiring. Inspiring. That's. Uh... An interesting way to phrase it. What do you think, Dr. Vern? I find it difficult to relate to such a profession or such a sphere of social influence. I did not have the same upbringing that no. you have had, uh, Teketh. I Most suppose without things don't. I suppose without any other more personal connections that you spend most of your time here amongst the lounge or otherwise socializing with the crew. That I do. When I'm not sleeping as one needs to, or researching, as I said. I spend a lot of time creating new drinks, planning new menus, themed themed nights and themed events in the lounge, attempting to make the Europa feel a little more like home. Who's home? Everyone's home. I suppose that is different to everybody. Yes. I know you don't spend much time in the lounge, doctor. Um, so you have likely not noticed that Ten Forward goes out of its way to celebrate all of, all of the different holidays that the crew members might observe. I suppose that is import an important part of a social structure aboard such a multi-ethnic vessel. Important to social structure, important to keeping morale up, and... Morale, morale is not generally a Vulcan concern. No, but morale is important to ensuring the ship doesn't explode or go haywire or unrest causes mutiny and we wind up drifting aimlessly into space. I suppose as the, if not center, but facilitator of a large amount of the social organization of this ship that you must hear a lot of interesting stories. I suppose if something were to happen that you would be the first to know. Generally. There are, there are many aboard the ship who would sooner confide in their bartender than go to the counselors. It must allow for a very unique perspective for gauging various cultures and psychologies. Perhaps one of these days I might have to join you and observe these experiments. I would gladly give you a place behind my bar, Doctor. I'll even teach you how to do the glass flip. A most illogical means of serving a drink. However, illogical, most of your drinks but they are... enjoy it. I suppose that is the service you provide. Yes. You must hear a lot of things in your position as bartender. Do? What's the most interesting thing you've heard? I'm afraid I can't divulge that. 
Uh, I see the private soul. I have a responsibility to my patrons. They expect, just as they would from the counselors, they expect a level of confidentiality and trust. Yeah. That's very nice of you uh, to be so considerate of your fellow person here on the crew. It's part of the job. Of course, if you did hear anything that compromised the security or well being of this vessel, that you would report it to a Starfleet officer. Certainly. Could, could we take just an out of character moment real quick to talk about where we want this scene to go? Because it feels like we're kind of becoming a little bit circular. Drifting, um, yeah. I was about to drop a, a thing in the Discord and realize I didn't have my Discord open. So mm. um, I, I forgot when I originally had this idea that Tekif that was not full Vulcan and was not even trying to appear full Vulcan. So mm. Varen's whole, I'm going to elicit an emotional response and that's going to give it away sort of... Uh, Line Didn't of work. thinking does not maybe, work for this situation. Yeah. Maybe we can settle with a role to see if the us working together is able to get it from him, or I don't um, know. at least some kind of insight check. I don't know what that would like. Yeah, sure. Um, I was going to suggest you guys bring up something about positronic systems because uh, Teketh, whoever did this, has some kind of knowledge of te of uh, deep understanding of positronic systems. But yeah, no, I'm fine with doing a role because I think we're we're heading kind of in a. Um, a slow direction. I think we've kind of lost the momentum of the of the investigation. So go ahead and do uh, an insight, and mm, it's probably either command or security. Uh, it's the interrogation has a security focus, so yeah, that helps. Yeah, and that, I think either one of those would be fine. Like either security or command would be fine. I, I can I can see a justification for either of those. So. Uh, I, I assume you'll roll the, the main role analysis. Yeah. Yeah. We can do it that way. Uh, Varen is not very good at, at insight command. Uh, I'll go ahead and use momentum. Or insight security, really. <laughs> yeah. Right. Ins insights, well, insight security is even worse. Well, not a great role. Uh, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say that makes the most. Uh, could could Varen, let me, let me just throw this out. Uh, could Varen do, could I argue for an insight science as she's going about this through a more uh, intellectual, methodical, like trying to Anthrop break down anthropological, uh, yeah, anthropological, cultural analysis sort of situation? I think, I think judging based on the <clears throat> Varen specialty, I would allow it because she is okay. an anthropologist. Cool. Um, and I actually got uh, three successes there. So, okay. So that's a target of 13. That dice bounced all over the place. And another success. Awesome. Nice. All right. So four successes. Um, that is going to be contested. So you're going to roll a contested roll there, Evelyn. Um, Which I'm going to fail because I built him with all the wrong numbers. <laughs> um, you'll be using either, I'm going to say probably control to maintain okay. your, uh, your, your whatnots. And not uh, presence. Isn't control usually more presence manual? Would yeah, presence would be probably the better one. I I okay. was looking right at the word presence and didn't see it. Um, security might be applicable too. Um, yeah, I would say either in, command or security. In that case, can I flip my numbers? Because actually, by I put eleven in control because I was thinking like self control, not physical control. That's actually where I was thinking about it just now too. That's why I didn't 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 do that. So um, I would say that is probably the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Okay. To switch those two, and it's not going to make a big difference either way because no. not a huge change. Um, um and then and it's either security. I would say commander security. Your security is higher, so you're probably yeah. security. Not by a whole lot, but I'll take. Not it. by a whole lot, but yeah. Where have I lost my thing? All right, and I'm getting rolling. getting four That's successes two. is going to be practically impossible for you anyway. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> Two and my focus of espionage will work. Or persuasion, and, either one or of those. Or persuasion. Yeah. Twice the focus is twice the fun. Twice wow. the failing the fucking roll. <laughs> okay. 
Um, well. So yeah, a lot of a lot of as you guys continue your investigation, uh, your your questioning, um, you start getting into more of the uh, you know where did you get this education? How did you know this? How did that kind of stuff? You know, a little bit more. Uh, it, it's a long and hard interrogation. And um, I, I feel like Teketh is being evasive in a non-Vulcan sort of mm-hmm. way. Sure. Um, and Part of that that's... is Avalyn is not good at being a Vulcan, <laughs> but you are not incorrect. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, evasive in a non-Vulcan sort of way and an emotional response that isn't necessarily... Um, Vulcanish. Yeah, Vul- Vulcan-ish. So like like even, even like Spock or other half Vulcan, half other... Uh, usually have some sort of there there's there's a structure to their emotional discipline and i don't think that structure is exactly what teketh is displaying yeah. right um and he, you know you kind of get the the feeling that it's things are getting kind of circular with the the way he's talking and and his evasions um so yeah you definitely get the idea that there's something more going on here um but he's obviously very skilled at at, at the evasion um, I don't know what you want to get from that role, but certainly a high probability suspect here. Like, yeah, I don't know if you want to like get him to. Ad- I don't think he's going to admit to it. I but... feel like we should reasonably suspect him, but not have any proof. Like, not right. get yeah. a full confession. Um, yeah, no, I think that's absolutely fine. I think I think that is. Um, uh, you have more than a more than reasonable suspicion, but not reasonable. Um, uh, nothing that is convincing beyond reasonable doubt. All right, so we'll we'll tell him to wait here, and we'll we'll see about getting him checked out. Then we'll go out and talk to Mills and Cobra. We'll be like, he did it. I'm I'm sure of it. He did it. Pull the turtle up. I know he did it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do the turtle test just in case? Oh, I think it's most just... illogical to jump to such a direct conclusion, but I would agree that Teketh does not display a response that I would find typical to somebody of their heritage and upbringing. His interrogation did run quite differently than all of the rest of the interrogations we've conducted today. I, I, I'm, I think I'm going to go search his quarters, see if I can't find any kind of uh, tech gizmos. I think smoking. we I think we need to run that by the commander first, Koba. I'm sure, but I think even in I, a security matter, I would hope aboard a Starfleet vessel that there is some amount of uh, privacy and decorum. Yes. Hence which why we is, need to run it by the commander first. Which is fair, but I feel like we've got reasonable. Yeah, we'll run it by the commander, but I do feel like we've got reasonable cause. I don't disagree. Well, as reasonable as, yes. I think as reasonable as we're going to get given the situation. We need to find but that smoking gun. The good doctor is absolutely correct. There, even among civilians, there is, there are procedures to follow and there is a level of privacy that should be able to be expected aboard a ship. Yeah, look, I'm not going to go digging into his dirty magazines, but, uh, you know. Wasn't Nimmin I needed. Well, anyway, I'm, uh, I'll call it into the command. Then, All right. Uh, you, you know what? I don't think he, I don't think he's going to call it in on, like, the, the comm badge, you know, no. security purposes. Uh, but he'll, he'll send, like, an encrypted message to... Ambrose uh, saying what the results were, and then maybe we should cut to another scene. Yeah, I was going to cut to Ambrose actually on the, yeah, Um, because I think Ambrose getting that message while he is with the Romulan would be fantastic. Would be what I was going for pacing wise. (laughs) Sure. Okay. Okay. Well, that that wouldn't come through the com badge. That would be like a a data packet sent to. I would assume you probably got, you know, like a pad with you or something like that, just because, you know, why sure. wouldn't you? Yeah, I, I suppose. Narrative convenience. Narrative all those, convenience. All those pockets that Starfleet uniforms have. Mm-hmm. Well, you're all business. You probably had questions you wanted to ask or had a list, you know? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you're as you're talking, um, the uh, the shift decloaks uh, about the time that your uh, your little 
pad uh, beeps. And she stands and, and heads towards the, the window, um, looking out at the ship. I'll stand and walk over to the viewport and look between the two very different ships. Both very fine works of ingenuity. Yes. I need to get out of my Vulcan. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, this will be an unauthorized activity. Even the Romulan command would not approve of what I'm going to do. But I will take you, a small group of you, into the Romulan, into Romulan space and to Iconia. We can reach that destination under cloak. You will, of course, as she turns to you and kind of re reapplies her uh, her more um, strict demeanor. You will, of course, be required to maintain your maintain. Uh, you will be required to uh, remain in your quarters aboard ship the entire trip. It's an awfully large vessel with, and I assume, an appropriate sized crew to escort a small contingent. It is unfortunate the ship I have available to me. Yes, it is a full complement. one of the many reasons why you may need to remain in your quarters. It may actually be advisable for you to um, she kind of looks to from like from ear to ear on like from each from each of your ears across your face kind of a uh, dress more appropriately. I'm quite experienced at blending in. I suppose this would be a completely unnecessary ruse to abduct a small amount of Starfleet officers, even a commander, I'm sure. I'm not that valuable. I would agree with that statement, Commander. If I were looking to abduct anything from the, from the Europa, it would be the Europa itself. Or perhaps it's Captain, who has intimate knowledge of the Europa's more advanced functions. Of course, uh, Starfleet Captain and the First Officer can't be on the same mission, so he will remain aboard the Europa. She turns and heads back towards the table. I suspect that he's going to have his own mission fairly soon. General Martok is making good progress. I will give you several hours, Commander. I know that it will take some time and you'll have to convince your captain to allow a small group of people to be absconded with on a Romulan vessel. But time is of the essence, as you said. I understand that you're going out on a limb here. You have just as much at stake, if not more, than I do in agreeing to this venture. I'm going to play ball. She kind of does the, almost a, almost a Vulcan eyebrow like when you say play ball. Like, just trying to figure out what the hell that means. <laughs> she gets it from context, obviously. but What size... What size team do you think would be appropriate to your to the accommodations you will be providing us? I would keep it limited to those who you know you can trust and who are efficient at ac 
accomplishing a covert operation such as this. No more than five, please. Any additional you need, I would be happy to supplement with Romulans. This is, after all, a Romulan matter, to some extent, anyways. The level of risk that I am taking, Commander, goes far beyond, I think, what you know. We must succeed. Failure in this operation will result almost assuredly in the Praetor's demise. And the faltering of the Romulan Empire and a great security risk to the Federation. Indeed. Not to mention Klingon issues. I believe that if the Romulan, if the Tal Shiar is backing Duras's play, or Tural's play, and the Praetor no longer maintain, maintains power, it would mean a fundamental change and shift in power in this sector. One that I do not believe the Federation can survive. Especially given the losses that we have all suffered during the Klinga, during the Dominion Wars. Make sure you bring your best. She kind of smiles. We'll bring the best that Starfleet has to offer. And we will, of course, be acting as Starfleet officers. I very much appreciate your assistance. And this will be a joint matter. But I am nothing if not a product of my upbringing. I'm sure you can understand. I believe that uh, I believe we are in agreement. I believe that Starfleet is the best, most capable group to deal with this particular situation. That's high praise. I also believe you've received a message recently. By all means, let, allow me to excuse myself. It has been a pleasure speaking with you again, and I look forward to seeing you soon. She um, picks up her her glass and sets it in the tri in, in the uh, replicator, but does not uh, does not recycle it. She stops as she's heading towards the door. There's an old earth saying, a nursery rhyme, I believe. I believe it deals with a plague or something that your civilization dealt with that is somewhat apropos. Uh, ring around with a rosy. She kind of smiles again and leaves the room. I'll I'll take my my teacup over to the replicator. I'm just gonna softly hum that Romulan nursery rhyme. Just just a couple bars of it before I get to the uh, replicator and uh, phase before it out of existence. Before she leaves the room, or while uh, she's I mean, still in the room. I, while she's leaving, whatever. Just I mean, she's okay. a perceptive person. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Okay. She um. Uh, yeah, she uh, looks back over her shoulder as the door closes. That's a good place to stop that one. Uh, so you have a message on your tablet, right? On your, on, on your on your spy pad. Um. Which gives you the information that uh, Teketh is uh, a, a strong suspect. I would also ask for permission to search his quarters. Probably also the probably also That's... search the the crew lounge and stuff like anywhere that he spends a lot of time. Yeah, I would yeah, imagine. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Mm. Mm. If, I know this doesn't sound great, but if it was Mills who gave this report and asked for that permission, he'd be like, go right ahead. But Coba, <laughs> in, in Ambrose's mind, Coba is not the ideal uh, <laughs> you know will, embodiment of discretion <laughs> i will point out he is perfectly confident confident oh yeah he has never fucked up he has yeah. just been kind energetic of really, enthusiastic yeah. and carries a turtle in his pocket for some reason <laughs> well armed with turtles yeah <laughs> uh do we want to i, I mean I, I think it would be most appropriate to just give the go-ahead because like yeah. after an interrogation is like when a person would go and burn documents or whatnot. Sure. Uh, Am Ambrose considers like maybe we want to have a, a, a debriefing with the captain and he's like, no, we don't have time for this. This is all internal. Uh, and he just sort of types a, a, an affirmative over to to Koba uh, with, with a it sort, sort of uh, affirmative, check it out, be discreet, let me know. Okay, yeah. Koba will definitely uh, be discreet about it. He'll just lead a couple of guys over, including Mills, I assume. Uh, and they'll go just, check just it a out. few guys, a mariachi band. <laughs> I was muted and talking to myself. Um, <laughs> while I was over here talking to myself, I was pointing out. I, I thought you were like arguing with Flyer or something. <laughs> I mean, I also am arguing with the son of a bitch who won't <laughs> leave me alone. Um, it, is, it is a problem, but. Uh, I was also attempting to point out that with Toshari telling you that she's got an agent on the ship, it's probably not all that far fetched to assume that the agent knows they've been they've been made. So mm -hmm. time may not necessarily be of the evidence of, of the essence. Yeah. Still, it's probably best. Like you're, hmm. you're right. It probably is the most wise decision to. Uh, to and make Ambrose the isn't going to share that. No, that revelation with a bunch of lieutenants sure, sure. <laughs> like that. He, Ambrose is going straight straight to Hage at this point. I don't know if that's the next thing we want to do, but Ambrose yeah, is going good. straight to Hage. I I would like to go back to Malini and uh, Tong. I feel yeah. like their their investigation is a little bit redundant at this point, since we since the crew knows who it is. But if we want to like have that be like they find the smoking gun, I think that way it's not just a bunch of wasted. Yeah, we were working yeah. on an extended task. I don't know how far we got. I think we like oh, really yeah. flubbed our, our first or second yeah. roll or something. I think that was actually the extended task that I had the captain and uh, uh, O'Connor finish earlier. Uh, doesn't matter because you guys would definitely succeed in it in this next roll because it was a super, you, you definitely would have gotten yeah, it. We only had roll. one left. Uh, yeah, you only had one work left. So you just had to not fail the roll. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so with, I'm going to say that with the roll that the captain and O'Connor made earlier, uh, we'll lower the difficulty of your extended task by one. You're almost guaranteed to succeed. Go ahead and make the roll anyways, just to be sure. Okay, if you say so. I... Uh, you guys are going to want some more momentum at some point soon anyway. So, um, And then I will I will finish handing off the information that you guys get there. Uh, who, who was leading that? Uh, Tong so... was. Oh, uh, Silva was. You're right. Yeah. I think I think Silva was, was leading it from a security standpoint, and Tong was just providing the engineering. Momentum. That's two successes. Uh, let me double check that real quick. Yeah, 14, yeah. Mm -hmm. Assuming I can use uh, daring. Sure. And then uh, Tong assists. And remind me, is this actually going back through the transporter and replicator and power systems and tracing trails, or are we just going through logs? Uh, you had been going through those logs specifically because you had been narrowing it down but no it was not actually going back through the power systems you were okay. going through the logs okay i think so oh, it was just like a full things. investigation through like a bunch of different things yeah along with the information that you guys got from your previous roles and the information that you got from the from cap the captain and um o'connor's stuff earlier you have narrowed the logs down you've narrowed it down considerably to what you're investigating and and, and like the actual area of investigation i will I'll give you something when you make the roll. Basically, you'll okay. have gotten. You're I, trying I'm to just, find out if, if your power system's roll should apply. It can, yeah, I'm just asking about focuses. I yeah, suppose. go go ahead and add that focus. And stuff. Cool. Uh, so control engineering. That's a 16 with a focus of five or below. That rolled straight off the virtual tray there. Never seen that happen. Uh, just, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Tongs. Got... Tongs all up in his head about this. 
Right. No. It rolled twice for you there. Apparently, the first one just took longer to actually acclimate. Oh, yeah, because um, it bounced off the side of the virtual tray and like rolled off the screen. <laughs> I mean, you, you can keep whichever one you want, but the I suppose the three was the one that actually purposely rolled. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We'll take the 17. It was the first one you rolled, sure, but it doesn't matter because sure. you got you got this guy anyways yeah, because uh, um, Silva got I, I think just, just because of those rolls, Tong is like, I don't, I'm so I don't I don't get this I don't I'm he's like clearly suffering and then uh, Silva is like I, I got it and then he's like oh right no I totally got that right right oh that makes sense <laughs> um so you got two successes right hey uh, right Silva correct all right you only needed one so <laughs> you only needed, you only needed to roll a one on the the work track the other which one, you're gonna do I'll put the other one back in the moment yep um so yes um. You find logs that uh, you find logs and some other things that that lead you to to finding one of the uh, um, the the spider pusses the you know thing that Tong had found earlier um, one that is uh, a transmittable one it, it is clearly the transmitter version of the one that he was looking at earlier which is clearly the receiving version that then you know. Um, it's the other half of the pair is what basically what you've discovered by looking through the logs and whatnot. Um, and you find it uh, in a panel not too far outside of the um, replica the, the the main lounge area. Uh, and there is, as part of your further investigation, um, you obviously would do any kind of log searches there, and you can find the command codes and and the the inputs that go to it and it is clearly um it is almost positively tech um you pretty much have a smoking gun at this point it is it is where the commands are entered and uh, uh and how they're entered and and accessed and they're basically sent in through uh subroutines in a replication uh thing and the, the replicator access is clearly through tech so Okay. Well, Silva, as soon as she sees that this is what they found, uh, she is going to go, oh, this is perfect. And then she is going to grab Tong, kiss him on the lips, and then run out of the room. <laughs> okay. You can just stop there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just picture it ending on that face that Tong is making right now. Yeah, he's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, I'm going to update. Apparently, the storm is a coming. Mm. My, my, my wife just messaged me saying that it's getting pretty nasty out there. So, again, on the ever watchful, we may lose power again. Um, so, with that in mind, uh, you definitely have the uh, the the smoking gun between all the work that was done by all the different crew members. Um, before we get to that, though, let's go ahead and uh, head to the bridge. Monsignor Hage. Do we want to do this in the bridge or the conference room? Uh, I've got another drop. I'm going to drop another piece of information on the captain. So, gotcha. Okay. Uh, this is an unrelated yet plot advancing piece of information. Fair enough. Is, is Ambrose in this scene? Uh, you can be if you like to. If you, I, you, I assume you just got aboard ship uh, and are, are yeah. planning to talk to the captain, but uh, a priority message from General Martok has come in. General Martok. So what do I owe this honor? It is my honor. I have found General Carrigan. His forces are located in the, Bal uh, the, the Balduk system. And I have he has recently claimed the system for the Empire. And the Balduk were defeated, which is no small feat. Uh, those of you who know anything about Starfleet, the Balduk are a pretty potent warrior race. Um, I am planning to strike at Carrigan's forces before they have a chance to resupply. It is. I'm requesting the Federation send ships. Well, I can send word to the. I can send word to the um, space station. However, uh, we're involved in hunting down the. Uh, we're trying to get. Uh, we're in rather delicate negotiations with the Romulans in order to uh, get access to their space. 
I understand. Do your best, Captain. I hope to see you in battle soon. Good luck. And uh, be sure and save some honor for the rest of us. He smiles and the screen goes out. Uh, he'll do exactly what he said. Uh, forward that over to the uh, space station. Let him know that uh, if, if we can get Starfleet... There we go. Yeah, I'm back for the moment. For the moment. I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, the power flicked uh, a couple is Jeff times. Back? Kind of. He's he is coming back. Yeah, I don't know that I'm going to have power for long, but uh, yeah, it did come back for the moment. It flickered a couple times and then came back. So. All right, I'm I'm here. Yeah, I've had a couple flickers, and Sage is super stressed out now. Yeah. He was usually I've been I keep the door shut so the dogs don't get disruptive, and usually Sage leaves everything alone. But he was I thought. Jackie come up to use the bathroom. I thought I heard her open the door. What I was hearing was Sage, like gently for Sage, head butting the door handle, like, hey, hey, I'm nervous. Let me in. Yeah. Well, Harley's doing the weather. She just wants food. Hey, yeah. <laughs> well, for us, it's definitively the weather. Mm -hmm. it's, it's raining here, but I, I don't have the same weather problems you guys do. Yeah. It's been bad I, the last couple of weeks. Oh, that, there it goes again. 